Want to feel like a lord of the wild or a bit of a druid? Then here's a simple trick. Grab a live ant and draw a circle around it with a pen. The ant will scuttle around inside that boundary for hours, unable to cross it. What's just a line of ink to us is a real obstacle to them, an uncrossable frontier. It's like a tiny moat with crocodiles that messes with ant instincts. Insects such as ants leave a pheromone trail behind them, a bit like a breadcrumb trail, but made of pheromones that help ants navigate and find their way back home. It's an effective strategy, especially since ants don't see well. So when you use the pen to wipe out that scent trail, the ant gets disoriented and has no clue where it is or how it got there. And don't forget the crocodiles. I mean, it's not just an obstacle. The pen trail is covered in wet, slippery, foul-smelling ink. So the ant's doing its best to avoid stepping in it. I can't blame it, honestly. You shall not pass! <laughs> Depending on the type of ink, it can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours for an insect to get out. Certain ants are so unlucky that they die in a circle from exhaustion, never finding a way out. It's not just ants. Plenty of other insects fall for this trap, too. While ants possess intricate organization, they're surprisingly susceptible to manipulation. You just need to place a substantial piece of food in the path of an ant. Unable to carry it alone, the ant will summon help, leaving a trail of pheromones. Even if you remove the food, the pheromone trail remains, fooling others into thinking there's a feast. Voila! You've ingeniously set the ant up, and the whole colony thinks it made it all up. But ants are a child's play. Trolling creatures much tinier than you isn't much of a challenge. But what if we're talking about something bigger, like a lion? Turns out lions are just as manageable as ants when you wield a chair. Over a century ago, Clyde Beatty, a lion tamer, discovered that a chair is a crucial tool for survival. While Beatty realized this, his colleagues didn't and sadly died. Remarkably, Beatty himself lived to 62. And it wasn't predators that killed him, so the chair. It turns out that raising the chair to a level where its legs are oriented toward the lion effectively confuses the predator. The animal perceives the legs as distinct entities, preventing it from focusing on a singular target. The dilemma becomes so perplexing that the lion chooses to freeze and await change rather than launch an attack on a person. Now think of something cooler than a chair, say a drone. This opens up the possibility of playing with great white sharks. Studies have revealed that these formidable creatures chase the shadow of the drone just like cats chase a laser pointer. Quite amazing, isn't it? Sharks are supposed to be apex predators. Although the drone remains unseen, its shadow catches the shark's eye. Once it appears, the shark's behavior changes. Why? Who knows? Maybe it finds it amusing. Scientists haven't figured out why sharks act this way, but they know exactly what happens when you turn a shark upside down. It's quite a scientific revelation, by the way. Flipping a shark onto its back immerses it in an almost hypnotic state, rendering the creature motionless for around 15 minutes. Researchers use this trick across different shark species, using it extensively for scientific purposes. It's a shame this doesn't work for all animals, it'd make things a whole lot easier. It's called tonic immobility, and yeah, Steve discovered it's present across various species, from mammals and insects to plenty of fish. Sharks, though, seem to really get into it. Sometimes, you don't even need to flip a shark. A little nose tickle does the trick. And humans aren't the only ones who figured out how tonic immobility works. There are records of orcas deliberately flipping sharks over to enjoy a leisurely meal without any hurry. And in those moments, sharks don't seem particularly grateful for this evolutionary quirk. But at least they don't mistake a man in a shark suit for a shark, I guess. Surprisingly, alligators seem to struggle with that. Gary Storage runs Gator Country Adventure Park, where he looks after captive alligators. His affection for these creatures goes so far that he made a special suit to hang out with them more often. In this suit, Gary can get close to the alligators, and they don't even realize that there's a man nearby. That is, until a man gets to his feet and, oh damn! Actually, who would have thought that predators could be fooled so easily? <laughs> To truly baffle an alligator, not just make it freak out, you gotta know the trick. It's like a shark stupor, but a bit trickier. Shut its jaws, no hands inside, obviously, then flip it onto its back, stretch that neck. The animal would react as if it's under attack and goes still. It's an inborn survival thing, staying still to remain unnoticed. These gators can hold that pose for ages until they're flipped back. 
But in general, experts say this position is unnatural for an alligator. Flipping over messes up the signals between its brain and inner ear, leaving the poor thing in a bit of a stupor. But simply, the alligator ends up so disoriented that its body and brain can't figure out how to get back on track. The pose might look odd, but the response is fairly standard. It's as typical as getting brain freeze, though not exactly. That's the headache you feel from eating something cold too quickly. You know, that sudden headache when cold stuff touches the roof of your mouth, causing blood vessels to constrict. And yeah, there's nothing scary about brain freeze. We all know the classic example of animals unexpectedly getting confused. Deer and cars. Take a look. This deer dashed onto the road, spooked by the headlights, and just froze, without any flipping or brain freeze, just to still stare at the lights. It lasted 30 minutes despite drivers trying to nudge it. Even when a police officer showed up, he couldn't budge the animal. Finally, the officer just picked up the deer and carried it away, literally. Actually, several deer species often freeze when they're uncertain about what they see or hear. It often happens on roads, when they get caught in the glare of headlights on a road. Yet a powerful light elsewhere can trigger the same reaction, causing them to freeze even deep in a forest. When total darkness suddenly gives way to a bright, piercing light, an animal's perception is limited to only that illuminated area. Deer eyes are designed for low light settings, plus their positioning makes it impossible to measure the distance to the light source. It's a scenario that could leave anyone frozen and disoriented. Go figure out what to do next. Goats behave a little differently. They faint. It's not every goat, just a specific breed known as the Tennessee fainting goat. Interestingly, it doesn't actually faint out of fear, if you think about it. Tennessee fainting goats inherit a condition called myotonia congenita, which affects their muscles. Simply put, they get spooked, try to flee, but their muscles contract, and soon enough, they're stuck, just toppling over. Handling these goats requires utmost care, and definitely no sneaking up on them in a goat costume. Like this guy, Thomas Thwaites, who ventured into the goat world to understand how they live. So he became a goat, moving, thinking, and eating like them. If those fainting goats were around, they'd probably all have dropped and stayed down for days with Thomas around. Let's face it, anyone would have been spooked here. Thomas's goat experiment could be considered a success, knowing it could have been way worse. For nearly a year, a Japanese scientist sported a pigeon mask to approach the birds, only to conclude later, the idea was just no good. Mask or no mask, the birds weren't falling for the scientist's pigeon impression. I guess the wrong size? Now tell me, how do you feel when you look at these circles? Well, if you were a pigeon, or this Japanese scientist, you'd definitely feel sick. The Nasa Senhora de Consolico Church in downtown Sao Paulo had a big issue with pigeons. They'd swoop in during sermons, making a mess on the benches and scatter feathers around. But after putting up those colored panels, the pigeons didn't even come close to the church. It's like they were in some sort of trance or something. Although calling it a trance wouldn't quite capture what Protect did, they set up rows of colorful targets painted on plastic panels in every church door and window. It looks basic, but it spins the pigeons around, making them feel sick and dizzy. So they decide to steer clear. This method was 100% successful. Not a single pigeon swoops into the church anymore. If pigeons were brighter, they might as well hang a no trespassing sign for them. No joke, this actually happened. At a Japanese research center in 2015, these signs were put up for crows. Surprisingly, once these signs appeared, mere words on paper, the crows stopped dropping by. Can birds actually read though? Not really. Well, it went like this. People would read the signs, catch the crows watching, and start pointing fingers at them. The crows felt uneasy, maybe a tad insulted, but when people weren't around, the truth is they couldn't care less about any rules. See you later. <laughs>